Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about my SCAV Recce Rifle. Recce Rifle. But before we get into that, it's time to acknowledge today's sponsor. And today's sponsor is Vetter Holster. So as their name implies, they make holsters. You know, like your inside the waistband holsters, outside the waistband holsters. But they also make belts, like your tactical nylon belts. But they also make these sick leather gun belts like this brown one you see here they also make a black version so this kind of just gives me a different option when it comes to my everyday carry and the gun belt that i'm using so go check them out tell them i sent you and again big thank you to them for supporting this channel but with that out of the way guys let's get into this video So I realized that the term recce and recce rifle are kind of like these overused buzzwords on social media right now. But, you know, that's the only reason why I kind of added recce into the name of this video, just to kind of like, you know, ride that hype train. Because I want to fit in. But, you know, literally the only thing that I did to this gun was add an LPVO and a pool noodle cheek riser to the stock here. And this new humongous a flash hider but um the reason why i kind of set my rifle up this way was based off my experience at the last tactical game so if you watch that video one of my key takeaways there was that you really kind of want an lpbo when it comes to your rifle setup um, because you know not to say that you can't make some of the shots with a red dot or god forbid like iron sights uh, which you know i did because i was using a carry handle mounted aimpoint pro last time i was going but um you know, a lot of those targets are out past 400 meters, you know, towards 500 or are like paper targets that have like a shape that you have to hit that are out at like 100 meters. And when your heart rate is all jack, you know, jacked to the max and you're like, oh, and you, you know, your vision's all blurry. Having something magnified to actually see the target is a, you know, great advantage to have. So, um, you know, I know I want an LPVO, but also the tactical games recently changed the rules where you can now use. 545, not 762 by 39, unfortunately, but you can use 545 as long as it's not armor piercing ammunition, you know, like the steel cord stuff. But, you know, that opened up my, you know, for me to use my PSA AK 74 to actually compete at the tactical games, which I was stoked about. So I had the gun, but I didn't have the optic because I'll be honest, I don't really have a lot of experience with LPVOs other than using, you know, like an Elkan Spectre, you know, one to four when I was in the military a ton, never with like a one to six or one to eight. You know, I've shot them before, never owned one, but you know, the guys over at Primary Arms were kind enough to send me this optic, which is their AC, um, you know, their one to six SLX with the ACSS reticle in the 545 or uh, 556. And honestly, this right, this optic is gonna, I feel like it's gonna do great for me because, um, you know, I've been able to hit targets out at, you know, towards 500 meters with this rifle, with this optic, no problem. Uh, used it in a variety of lighting conditions, you know, out in the woods a couple of weeks ago. And I think this optic's gonna do great. But the one thing I noticed when it comes to mounting it on this gun, I was having a real hard time trying to find where to put my head to get a proper sight picture with the eye relief, especially at like six by on this optic. Um, and it wasn't due to the optic, it was because of the stock on this rifle. So. As you can see here, I just have the basic triangle folding stock. Excellent stocks, you know, super sturdy, bomb proof, and it has a really nice aesthetic to it, but it really sucks when it comes to having an optic mounted on here, you know, higher up, and getting the proper, you know, cheek or chin weld with this stock here, because it's mounted higher up. So I kind of threw this uh, picture of this rifle set up on Instagram, and I wrote something to the effect of like, man, I really need a cheek riser. And people kind of got in my comments telling me different stocks I should buy. And um, you know, which I might in the future, but one comment in particular caught my eye. And that was, it was something along the lines of like, Niet, cut a pool noodle and stick it on your triangle folder and embrace the East or something. So I was like, maybe this guy's onto something because you know, I knew I had a couple pool noodles in my garage or kind of annoying me. So just picked one of those, uh, cut it out about eight inches and made a slit big enough so I can wrap it around the stocks, but it's still tight. And one kind of nice thing is that I had a strip of Velcro on the stock here left over from 
when I was using the Rifle Dynamics stock pouch, which I really wasn't using that stock pouch for anything, so it didn't feel too bad taking it off, but there was still that strip of Velcro that is required to mount that pouch. So I took my own Velcro, put it on the inside of the pool noodle, and kind of stuck it on there so it has some rigidity. And then I just wrapped it really tight with 100 mile per hour tape, and this thing isn't going anywhere, because even if, like, maybe it would if I twisted it real hard, as hard as I could, but you know, with normal wear and tear, this isn't gonna go anywhere. And if something does happen, I mean, it's literally just like cutting another pool noodle and just sticking on there. So not a huge deal, but even now it looks really kind of- Fucking disgusting. It works great. It puts my head in the perfect position, even on like six by every single time. It's a you know, very comfortable thing to kind of mash your head against if you need to. And you know, it works and I actually love it. <laughs> it has a, its own aesthetic to it and it kind of fits the theme of this rifle, but I think it's just gonna be funny kind of walking up to the tactical games, you know, where there's guys in their, you know, there's tech wear shirts and their Reebok shoes and their staccatos and they're just like, me. <laughs> and you know, other than it'd be kind of funny, I think it's gonna be a really cool uh, comparison to see like an AK and 545 versus like ARs with a similar setup in you know, 556223. And I know it's kind of been done before. I know Kit Badger competed at the Tactical Games with a 556 AK. Haven't seen it with a 545. I'm sure there's somebody who's done it before, but I think it'll still be kind of a cool comparison. But other than that, you know, I left the light on there just because I like my rifles to have lights. And sometimes the Tactical Games, there are some low light stages. Um, but I also added this humongous flash hider on here. So this is a flash hider sent from the company Barus. Um, after they saw my video on their muzzle brake, they sent me one of their flash hiders. And I actually needed a flash hider for the tactical games because in the rules, you cannot use muzzle brakes, mostly just to, uh, to keep you from kicking up debris at other competitors when you're in close proximity to them, which I understand because you know some of the muzzle brakes I've ran on this 74 are like nuclear bombs you know, going off. So. Um, the flash hider makes sense and Baru sent me this one and it's like, it almost looks like a suppressor. It's huge. It's not that heavy though. Um, and it does seem really well made. I haven't used it. I j literally just got this in the mail. So I stuck it on here because this is what I'm actually using, um, planning on using at the tactical games. I'll have a, its own video on it soon. Just kind of see how well it does it. You know, if it's this big, I expect it to be very good at you know suppressing flash, but you know we shall see. But other than that, guys, this is the rifle that I'll be using at the Tactical Games. I think it should be pretty cool video and a good experience. Just kind of seeing how something like a you know a magnified optic on an AK-74 does in that type of um, environment. Another thing I kind of want to go over, guys, is the kit that I used um, in the video, maybe like in the intro here. Um, so. Uh, starting off here on the right, just have this Burkut Day Pack. This is from Wartech. None of this stuff was sent from these companies. I bought all this stuff with my own money due to me going to the, tac or not the tactical games, but to Milsim West on the Russian side, so Rus4. So I had to buy a Russian kit and bought this and used this in conjunction with the Slick Play Carrier, the Wartech TV115, which is I have right here. And worked out really nicely and kind of going in the theme of like the recce theme of this video you know if you're doing recce stuff you're probably going to want to be able to carry some things to kind of sustain you out there so this back this uh day pack's been really good it carries about three liters of water got a hose right here and during milsom west and i was carrying like a rain jacket extra ammo uh, extra batteries stuff like that food so it was a really nice day pack and i actually like it a lot it's also an atax foliage green a camouflage pattern I believe is super underrated and uh, you know especially in the west it's big out there in Russia but it actually works very well I found especially in the area I live in but other than that on my left here this is a ANA alpha rig so uh, ANA is another Russian company I use their uh, if you see my my combat pants and ATEX foliage green those are made by ANA as well um, you know, you might recognize this rig from Escape from Tarkov because it is one of the rigs you can buy. Excellent rig for carrying a bunch of ammo on you. You carry eight mags in these pouches right here, along with these little two side sustainment pouches here. Right now, I think I have a, yeah, I have a, I have a Nalgene bottle on this one. I was using this actually airsofting yesterday, um, just kind of testing out some gear and some setups, and I was testing this out. And the one thing I found though, 
when it comes to this rig, it's really good at carrying, you know, rifleman stuff. Really sucks if you're trying to use a pistol because these side pouches, no matter how high you try to ride this thing, really get in the way of you using like a mid-ride holster. So if you're gonna use a pistol with this rig on, might wanna consider a drop leg. Um, you know, those are not optimal to today's standards. But um, other than that, nice rig. You can also, it's really cool to wear kind of over a slick plate carrier, which is uh, what I was doing yesterday. I was wearing this without this front panel on it and then just wearing this over it because I find that H harnesses are better for wearing over armor, which this rig has. But you know, I think I'm gonna use this rig actually at the next Milsom West I go to, which is I mean, Oklahoma, where it's gonna be more of a wooded environment, less, you know, like almost no buildings or anything. So it's not gonna be like close in, or it's all close in, it's airsoft, but um, it's gonna be more like sneaking in the woods, recce stuff. So <laughs> I'm gonna wear this. And I think in conjunction, with one of these leaf tops. So <laughs> these are actually, I bought this um, initially to wear at Milson West, didn't end up wearing it because it was all urban. Um, and I bought this to kind of simulate. So if you look at some sample pictures of Russian FSB, you can see them wearing these leaf tops. It's not this one. This is like the, the Bass Pro Shop $60 version. You can buy the legit stuff, which I actually have coming here soon. The main difference between the two is that the legit like Russian version has mesh on the inside of here. This is just nylon and you get super freaking hot in this thing. Like you'll overheat and die fast if you're running around, if it's over like 60 degrees. So if you're, you know, wearing this thing and it's, you know, around a little on the warmer side, <laughs> wear like a freaking tank top or something because you will start sweating big time. Um, looking forward to getting like the legit Russian one. Um, you know, where I won't overheat, but I found that this <laughs> works out very nicely. I was actually wearing this. It was really cold yesterday at the airsoft game and uh, people were, I was like laying around in bushes and people weren't seeing me at all. Cause it, like real tree camo kind of style, these leaves really, just really good at breaking up your outline. And I was kind of messing around with the idea of like, like an assaulter's ghillie. So something you could be wearing that will quickly kind of break out your line, make you, you know, kind of camouflage without getting into stuff like this, which is like, you know, more, this is a Viper hood, but it's got jute on it. And I found when you're trying to do like, you know, rifleman stuff, all this jute gets like really annoying. It just gets in your face and everything. I mean, it works really well for like sniping or crawling around, but when it comes to like running around and, you know, being doing rifleman stuff, um, this kind of sucks. So I like the idea of wearing one of these in conjunction with kit and, um, you know, which would work out nicely on like an ambush line or something like that, doing like a leader's recon. And uh, yeah, so I kind of want to be messing, I want to mess around more with the leaf tops. I think they're awesome and supremely based. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at bluejeanoperator or go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch which helps support this channel. Also make sure to hit that notification bell just to keep up to date whenever I decide to post a new video. But Another thing, I showed you the rifle that I'm using at the Tactical Games. I haven't shown you the pistol, so get down in the comments. And if you've seen a pistol that was, you know, appeared before on this channel, or you'd like to see me try to acquire a pistol, let me know which pistol I should be using at the Tactical Games. I'm very curious, haven't decided yet, but yeah, let me know down below. And you know, that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.